Hi guys! In this video, we're gonna find the volume using the cylindrical shell method. So let's say we have a function y is equal to x times x minus 1 to the power of 2. That's this pink function right here. And we're gonna take the area between 0 and 1. So it's this area right here. And we're gonna rotate it around the y axis. So once we do that, we're going to have this three-dimensional object that we want to find the volume of. So we want to use the shell method when our three-dimensional object looks like a mountain with a dent inside it. And the shell method says that if we place a cylinder like this, and the base of the cylinder is on the x-axis, then we integrate with respect to x. If it's on the y-axis, so let's say we have a cylinder, and the base is on the y-axis, kind of like this, then we integrate with respect to y. Now, in this case, it's on the x-axis. So the volume formula will be v is equal to the integral from a to b of 2 times pi times the radius times the height, which is f of x. And then don't forget the d of x right here. Step number one, we want to find A and B. So A will always be the start, which is in the middle, and B is at the end. And so A is equal to 0, and B is equal to 1. The second step is to find the radius and the height. So the radius is basically the distance between here and here. And we can say that this distance is x. And then the height is the distance from here to here. And we can say that this distance is y. So the radius, r of x, is the same as x. And then the height, which is f of x, is equal to y. Now, since we're integrating with respect to x, we need to rewrite this function in terms of x right there. So how can we do that? Well, we know that y is equal to x times x minus 1 to the power of 2. So we can simply say that y is equal to x times x minus 1 to the power of 2. So the next thing that we should do is substitute these formulas back into our formula right here. So the radius is simply x, and the height, which is f of x, is x times x minus 1 to the power of 2 times dx. The last step is to evaluate this integral, and that will basically give you the volume of this three-dimensional object. So since 2 pi are constants, they're just numbers, we can bring them outside of the integral. So v, the volume, is equal to 2 times pi times the integral from 0 to 1 times x times x times x minus 1 to the power of 2 dx. I know it's a handful. <laughs> so we're going to have 2 times pi times the integral from 0 to 1 times x times x again. And in here, this is going to be x to the power of 2 minus 2x plus 1 dx. So we can also rewrite this as 2 times pi times the integral from 0 to 1 times x times, we're going to multiply x by these expressions right here. So we're going to end up with x to the power of 3 minus 2 times x to the power of 2 plus x. And then we close the bracket and we have dx. Then we're also going to have 2 times pi times the integral from 0 to 1. And this is going to be x to the power of 4 minus 2 times x to the power of 3 plus x to the power of 2 dx. So this is equal to 2 times pi times the antiderivative of x to the power of 4. So we're going to have x to the power of 5, and then we divide by that exponent, so we have 1 over 5, minus the antiderivative of 2x to the power of 3. 
So we're going to have 2 times x to the power of 4. So we add the exponent by 1, and we divide by that exponent. So divide by 4. And at the end of the day, we're just going to have 1 over 2 times x to the power of 4. And the antiderivative of x to the power of 2 is simply 1 over 3 times x to the power of 3. And the limit goes from 0 to 1. So the top is 1, the bottom is 0. And the thing that we need to do is we need to substitute these numbers into our formula right here. So we're going to get 2 times pi times 1 over 5 times 1 to the power of 5 minus 1 over 2 times 1 to the power of 4 plus 1 over 3 times 1 to the power of 3. And we need to minus the lower limit. So we're going to substitute 0 in here. We're going to get 1 over 5 times 0 to the power of 5 minus 1 over 2 times 0 to the power of 4 plus 1 over 3 times 0 to the power of 3 and we can close the bracket right here. Now if you pay attention you will know that this whole thing is going to be 0. So that's the first thing that we can do is to simplify it. So this right here is going to be 0 and then 1 over 5 times 1 is going to be 1 over 5. 1 over 2 times 1 to the power of 4 is just going to be 1 over 2. And the same thing here, that's just going to be 1 over 3. So we're going to get 2 times pi times 1 over 5 minus 1 over 2 plus 1 over 3. The common denominator is going to be 30. So we get 2 times pi times 6 over 30 minus 15 over 30 plus 10 over 30. Now 6 minus 15 is negative 9 and negative 9 plus 10 is positive 1. So this is equal to 2 times pi times 1 over 30 and this is the same as pi divided by 15. <laughs> so this number right here is the volume of our three-dimensional object. Let's do one more problem. So we have a function y is equal to x minus x to the power of 2 and that's what the function looks like. It's a parabola and we're gonna rotate the area between 0 and 1, so this area, and we rotate it around x is equal to 2. So once we do that, we're going to get this three-dimensional object. If we place the cylinder right here, notice that the base of the cylinder is on the x-axis. So we integrate with respect to x. The formula will be v is equal to the integral from a to b of 2 times pi times the radius times the height dx. Now go ahead and try this problem and find a volume. And I'll show you the answer right now. So the first step is to find a and b. Our original function goes from 0 to 1. So a is 0 and b is 1. What is the radius? Well, if you look at the diagram, we know that the distance from here to here is 2. The distance from here to here is 2. The distance from the center until it touches our cylinder is x. So the radius is the distance in between. And we can find that distance by taking 2 minus x. So the radius will be equal to 2 minus x. And how about the height? The height will be just y, so f of x is the same as y, and y is equal to x minus x to the power of 2, because that is our function right there. Now let's go ahead and substitute these back into our formula.
what is 2 minus x times x minus x to the power of 2? Well, let's find that first. So we got 2 minus x times x minus x to the power of 2. So we're going to take this, multiply by this, then take this, multiply by this, and then the same thing for our second term. This will be equal to 2x minus 2x to the power of 2 minus x squared plus x to the power of 3. This is simply x to the power of 3 minus 3 times x to the power of 2 plus 2x. Since 2 pi are just constants, we should bring them outside of the integral. So this is equal to 2 times pi times the integral from 0 to 1 of x to the power of 3 minus 3 times x to the power of 2 plus 2x dx. Let's evaluate this integral. So this is equal to 2 times pi times the antiderivative of x to the power of 3. We're going to get 1 over 4 times x to the power of 4 minus the antiderivative of 3x to the power of 2. So we're going to get 3 times x to the power of 3. We add the exponent, then we divide by that exponent. So this will simply be x to the power of 3. How about the antiderivative of 2x? Well, we add the exponent, so we get 2, then we divide by 2, and at the end of the day, we're just going to get x to the power of 2. Now, the limit goes from 1 to 0, and we got to substitute these numbers into our formula. So if you substitute it, you will get 1 over 4 minus 1 plus 1. We know that this is going to be 0, <laughs> so this will be equal to 2 times pi times 1 over 4, and the answer will be pi divided by 2. So you can leave it the way it is, or you can say unit to the power of 3. It's completely up to you, but this number right here is the volume of our three-dimensional object. How about this problem? So we have a similar problem. This time we have y is equal to 4x minus x to the power of 2. So it's a parabola right here. And what we're going to do is we're going to rotate the area between 0 and 4 around x is equal to negative 2. So once we rotate it around this axis, we're going to have this three-dimensional object. And because we place the cylinder here and the base of the cylinder is on the x-axis, we integrate with respect to x. So the volume will be the integral from a to b of 2 times pi times the radius, which is r of x, and then times the height, which is f of x. And don't forget the d of x right here. The first step is to find a and b. If you take a look at the original function, it goes from 0 to 4, so a is 0 and b is 4. Step number 2 is to find the radius and the height. So if we place the shell right here, the radius is the distance right there. So we know that the distance from the center until we reach the outer shell is x. And we also know the distance from the center until the axis is 2. So the radius is just 2 plus x. Now let me write that down. The radius is equal to 2 plus x. Now how about the height, f of x? The height is just y. So this is going to be y. And we also know that y is equal to 4x minus x to the power of 2. Now let's go ahead and substitute it into our formula. 
what is 2 plus x times 4x minus x to the power of 2? Well, let's write that out. We got 2 plus x times 4x minus x to the power of 2. This is the same as 8x minus 2 times x to the power of 2 plus 4x to the power of 2 minus x to the power of 3. This will simply be negative x to the power of 3 plus 2 times x to the power of 2 plus 8x. Now let's substitute this back into the formula. Since 2 pi are just constants, we should move them outside of the integral. So we're going to get 2 times pi times the integral from 0 to 4 of negative x to the power of 3 plus 2x to the power of 2 plus 8x dx. This will be the same as 2 times pi times the antiderivative of negative x to the power of 3, which is just negative 1 over 4 x to the power of 4, plus the antiderivative of 2x squared, which is just 2 over 3 times x to the power of 3, and the antiderivative of 8x. So that's going to give us 4 times x to the power of 2, and the boundary goes from 4 to 0. And let's substitute all of them in. So we're going to get 2 times pi times negative 1 over 4 times 4 to the power of 4 plus 2 over 3 times 4 to the power of 3 plus 4 times 4 to the power of 2. And if you substitute a 0 in, it's just going to be 0 at the end of the day. So this is just going to be minus 0. And we can close the bracket right there. Let's rewrite this as 2 times pi times negative 1 over 4. And 4 to the power of 4 is going to be 256. So 256 plus 2 over 3 times 4 to the power of 3 is 64. Plus 4 times 4 to the power of 2 is just going to be 16. This is the same as 2 times pi times negative 256 over 4 plus 128 over 3 plus 64. 256 divided by 4 is the same as 64. So this is going to be 64. And negative 64 plus 64 is just 0. So we're going to have 2 times pi times 128 divided by 3. This is the same as 256 divided by 3 pi, unit to the power of 3. So this right here is the volume of our three-dimensional object.